question two is asking us to go backwards. We're going to be using the same formula that we did for question one, which is the margin of error equals t alpha over 2 times s over square root of n. And again, the degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So plugging in the numbers that we have, the margin of error is 16.892. I don't know what the t alpha over 2 is. Okay, if I knew the confidence level, I would know t alpha over 2. So that's what I'm actually solving for. And as before, the s, or the sample standard deviation is 23, and n is 7. So that means our degrees of freedom is n minus 1, or 6. To solve for t alpha over 2, I can divide both sides of the equation by 23 over square root of 7. Okay, so t alpha over 2 is 16.892 divided by 23 divided by square root of 7. And when I divide that out, I get a 1.943. So now if I look at my t-table, I know I have degrees of freedom equals 6. If I look at my t-table and the degrees of freedom equals 6 row, look for the closest value to 1.943. So I see that, and it's in the column t.050. So I know t.050 equals 1.943 when degrees of freedom equals 6. Okay, so the 1.943 is our t alpha over 2. So t.050 equals t alpha over 2, again, when degrees of freedom is 6. So when the t values are the same, the subscripts must be the same. So 0 0.050 must equal alpha over 2. Now if I multiply both sides by 2, I get 0.1 equals alpha. So 10% not confident means 90% confident. Or in other words, this is a 100, 1 minus alpha percent confidence level. Okay, and if I plug in 0.1, I get 100 times 1 minus 0.1%, which is a 90% confidence level.